Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. On today's video, it's going to be part one of a repair series on the classic Macintoshes. Let's get right to it. So what you see next to me are a donation of six classic Macs and this Mac Portable from Cal, who has previously donated to the channel those G4 cubes that I've shown before came from Cal as well. I met Cal at the Commodore Computer Club meetings up in Vancouver, Washington, which happen once a month on the first Friday of every month, and I try to regularly always go to that. Of course, with the pandemic, it's not happening right now, but once things return to normal, those meetings will resume, and if you want to come meet me and all the other nice people that attend, come on down. Cal ended up acquiring a bunch of computer, and in that lot was a bunch of stuff that didn't work. From an inventory perspective, we have two Macintosh Plus machines on the end. We have three Macintosh Classics. These are the original 68,000 ones. And this right here is a Macintosh Classic 2, which is more like an SE30. And then there's also a Macintosh Portable, which was Apple's first laptop computer ever. Well, I'm calling this thing a laptop is generous because this thing is an incredible boat anchor. It's so, so heavy. In case anyone's interested, this Macintosh Portable is an M5120 model number. I have no idea if this thing works, but it does have a big hole in the side of the case right here for whatever reason. These machines are notoriously unreliable. So I completely anticipate that this machine is broken, but I will take a deeper dive look at this in a future video and we'll see. Maybe there's a chance this thing works, who knows? None of these six machines are working, but with these four Mac Classics here, well, three plus the Classic 2, it's 100% for sure that the motherboards will have leaking capacitors. And when those leak, it causes a lot of damage on the boards, but it prevents these machines from booting altogether. They'll turn on, you'll get garbage or sad Macs. The Mac Plus machines, on the other hand, are pretty reliable. Probably the biggest fault on these will be the analog board with some overheating connections. It's usually not too difficult to repair. So the first step in troubleshooting is going to be number these machines and power them up one by one and check out what the symptoms are. Let's start with the oldest computer in the lot. This is the Mac Plus. It's kind of a bit yellowed, very dirty, lots of scuff marks. This is just a scuff on the CRT that should come right off. The side of the case just has more scuffs and a few scratches in the plastic. Not much to report on the back of the case other than someone has written two megabytes here over the one megabyte Macintosh Plus. Has the battery door on here. We pull that off, it's in good shape. Oh, well, that's good. There's no battery inside and there's no corrosion. Ports all look fine. There's this weird anti-theft thing stuck on here. Might be impossible to take off, although maybe I'll just hit this with a whole bunch of heat and maybe that adhesive will loosen up. The side of the case is a little worse for wear. There's definitely a lot of scratches in the case. Something metal and heavy must have been sitting on the side of this case and scratching back and forth. And for anyone that's interested, there is the serial number. Pause the video now to read that yourself. Okay, I'm gonna plug this in. Now, one thing to consider on Mac Pluses is the Rifa caps on the power supply are connected before the power switch. So do not leave these connected if you haven't replaced those Rifa caps, or you'll get a little bit of a smoke screen when the Rifa cap blows. Let's power this up. All right, I can hear right away what's going on. The analog board seems to be just resetting very quickly. I hear the disk drive seeking and it clicking, and it just kind of does it repeatedly. It never gets to the bong. With that particular symptom, there's really just a couple possibilities. The analog board has a fault, or the motherboard has a shorted tantalum capacitor that's bringing down one of the voltage rails. It shouldn't be too hard to fix. Number one, power cycling. The next Mac Plus is a platinum version. These are later because the case color is a little bit more of that later gray color. Otherwise, it's identical to the earlier ones. Front of the case is in pretty nice shape, actually. There's a little nick in the plastic here, a couple scuffs here or there. Otherwise, it looks nice. The side of the machine looks great, no particular damage, and actually has the reset and interrupt buttons on here, which I'm going to remove now, because if you try to take the case off while this is installed, it will break this. And this is in perfect condition, so I'm gonna keep this off this computer in case I wanna use this on another machine. Back of the machine looks good. It has no anti-theft thing on here, which is great, and the battery door is installed. Let's pop that off, take a look inside. There's a little tiny bit of corrosion on this lower contact, so I can clean that up without too much trouble. And on this side of the machine, it looks perfect as well. No complaints. Here's the serial number sticker on this Mac. If you wanna decode this, pause the video now and write that down. All right, let's plug this machine in and see what this one does. 
Okay, we're getting the beep. We got the bong, I mean. And it looks like we have no picture on this one. Yep, moving the brightness knob back and forth. We have no picture whatsoever, but the bong indicates that the motherboard is getting powered up and is booting properly. So it probably works if it weren't for the fact that we can't see the picture. Let me try power cycling it one more time. All right, I'm gonna set the brightness knob in the center and I'm gonna give the computer a tap on the side, see if that makes it appear for a second. Nope, no effect whatsoever. So for this machine, number two, no display, but boots. Okay, number three machine is a Macintosh Classic. Front of the machine looks fine other than it's dirty. Side of the machine is dirty, has a couple scratches. It still has the reset and interrupt buttons on here. Not much to report on the back of the machine other than of course it's dirty and it's yellowed. I never had one of these machines before, so I'm kind of intrigued there's only one ADB port. That seems like quite a cheapening. The SE and the SU30 had two ports here. This looks like a battery door here, which is interesting because the SE and the SE30 had the battery installed on the motherboard, but this seems to come off. Oh, and that's not a battery door at all. These are controls for the CRT. Okay, does give you an idea of how yellow the case is though. It should be this color gray, platinum, and it's actually quite yellow. Here's a serial number sticker, manufactured January 1991, and there's a serial number if you are interested in that. And this side of the case is actually a lot less yellow, it has some scuff marks, otherwise seems okay. There's something interesting I noticed on this case, the lip is sort of sticking up right here. So either it's melted or someone put it together wrong, or maybe there was a manufacturing problem from the factory. As I had mentioned before, it's almost certain that none of these classics are gonna work because the motherboard's gonna have leaking caps, which causes all sorts of damage. Let's power this up, see what happens. Okay, there's a fan that's making a weird noise. The hard drive is spinning. Okay, it seemed to turn off and on there. That could be a power supply issue, but it could also be shorts happening on the motherboard. Let's just try one more time. So it's spun up, no bong, no display. This is definitely one sick machine. I'll put a note on here. Number three, intermittent PSU, no boot, and hard drive spins. Here's the fourth Mac Classic. It's interesting, there was a sticker here, so it's lighter, a few scuffs on the front, but it's otherwise not too bad. Side of the machine's in decent shape, although there's a bit of rubbing right here. The reset interrupt buttons are there still. Everything looks okay on the back of this machine, although it's got one of these anti-theft things, just like one of those Mac Pluses before. This side of the case seems generally okay, but I don't know what happened here. Someone took a grinding wheel to this case. Maybe they were experimenting with their Dremel but there's quite a bit of material removed and it's all melted. This is the plastic here. So this machine is definitely never gonna look brand new again. Here's the serial number sticker, manufactured April 1991. Pause if you wanna read that serial number. Okay, it's plugged in. Let's power this up, see what happens. Okay, I'm hearing the hard drive. I heard the floppy drive. Oh, we got a sad Mac with some garbage inside of it. Screen's a little bit dim. Let's hit the reset button on the side. Nothing. It just immediately shows that before it even boots at all. This is absolutely a symptom of those bad capacitors though, but could be bad RAM as well. The main video memory is contained in the main memory of this machine. So if you have bad memory, it can cause graphical glitches, but the chance that the caps leaked is basically 100%. Let's just try one more time with power cycling and see what happens. And instantaneously there's that sad Mac and there was no sound as well but that's not unusual. The sound circuitry on these machines runs through those capacitors. So when they're all failed, you have no audio. And that's a very common problem with all Macintoshes of this vintage. So there we go. Number four, sad Mac, no audio. Here's the fifth machine. This one seems in pretty good shape. It's not that yellowed. There's a few scuffs here or there. The feet are missing on the bottom. So it actually rotates very easily on my desk. No issues on this side of the machine whatsoever. It's pretty clean. Back of the machine looks great as well. There's a bit of dirt up at the top here, but none of that stupid anti-theft stuff. This machine was manufactured in November 1990, so it's a bit older. There's the serial number if you are interested in seeing that. Right side of the case has a couple scratches and scuffs, but otherwise, it's pretty good. Here we go, let's power this up. Power supply sounds good because I hear the hard drive and I heard the floppy drive. It's a noisy hard drive, but it probably still works. And the hard drive just spun down. The hard drive is spinning up and down, so it's probably bad. 
and I'm seeing a very faint image here on the CRT. Let's hit the reset button on the side. Nothing is happening whatsoever. So we're not even getting a sad Mac and the display is very dim. Let's power cycle it one more time and see what happens. We saw a little bit of garbage on the CRT and then it popped up. Unfortunately on the classics, there's no way to control the brightness manually. So the dimness might be a weak CRT or a problem with the analog board, but it could also be the signals that are coming from the motherboard that's causing it not to show any brightness. And here we go. Number five, bad hard drive, solid screen, dim screen. And finally, there's the Mac Classic 2, which is arguably the best one of the lot. I think this machine is as fast as the SE30, 16 megahertz, 32-bit, 68030. So while editing this video, I went and looked up what the Mac Classic 2 actually is, and I thought originally that it was as good as the SE30. But nope, I'm wrong. I'm highlighting why this machine is actually worse than the SE30. Basically, it had the same speed processor at 16 megahertz, but it actually only had a 16-bit data bus versus a 32-bit, which limited the RAM to 10 megabytes, but also slowed it down, saying it was actually 30% slower than the SE30. Looking at this timeline, the SE30 came out in 1989 and was the best ever of the little compact monochrome Macintoshes. It was discontinued by Apple in late 1991 and immediately replaced with the Classic 2, which looked very similar to the SE30 and yet was worse. Why didn't Apple just keep making the SE30 instead of discontinuing it and replacing it with an inferior machine? With the regular Classic replacing the SE, it wasn't really a worse machine. Performance was basically the same as the SE, and it probably cost less due to a simplification of the motherboard. But with the Classic 2, that cost cutting brought a big performance decrease. It just doesn't make sense to me. Front of the machine looks pretty decent. Side of the machine looks okay. There's a couple scratches in it that are actually in the plastic. The interrupt button is actually broke. And this is stranger, these holes here, which I thought maybe were drilled by hand, but it can't be. They are way too nice and perfect. So this obviously was something done at the factory. I don't know if this is for ventilation or this is for the sound to come out, say, of the speaker. Like I mentioned before, I've never seen a classic in person before, so I don't know if this is stock, but I guess it is. Not much to report on the back of the machine. It does have one of these anti-theft things stuck into the lock hole. I do notice this has an audio input jack, which aren't on the other classic Macintoshes, so I guess that's a nice feature. The machine was made in October 1992, and there is the serial number if you want to pause to take a look at that yourself. This side of the machine has some scratches and scuffs, but nothing too serious. And I noticed while moving this machine around, there are loose parts inside of this machine. It's also pretty light. All right, let's power this up, see what happens. I hear a fan. I don't hear a hard drive. I think I heard the CRT come on, the high voltage. There is a very dim white background here. Not much else is happening on this machine. Hitting, hitting the reset button causes it to kind of flicker and change, but not really seeing any kind of sad Mac. I do hear the floppy drive seek when you first turn it on, which is normal for those Sony drives. But yep, not much else going on with this thing. Well, then there's the note. Number six has fan spin, dim picture, and loose parts. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take the screws out of all of those Macs. I don't have the Mac cracker, so I have to use a flat blade screwdriver with a bit on the end, a Torx bit with a slot cut in it. That lets me reach down through the top handle and get them all off. So I'm gonna take all the screws off all at the same time. That way it's just done, and then I can work on the machines and pull parts out of them and swap things around. So let me get to opening them up. Okay, all of the Macs have been decased. Now, I did notice some things while taking these apart. 
Some of these machines are really bad off. This is the Mac Classic 2. It says fan spin, but dim picture and had loose parts inside. I think it's possible the loose part I heard was actually just this power connector floating around. Someone removed the hard drive, which would normally go right here on top of the floppy drive. So that's gone, been taken out. So this probably made that noise. So unfortunately, I think this Classic 2 is a goner. Let's pull this out of here. All right, let's take this neck board off. Oh, it looks like Apple gunked it with some sort of slastic -y stuff here. So I'm just going to cut through it with these side cutters. Almost there. There we go. You just take that board off. It just prevents you from snapping the back CRT neck here. Okay, disconnect the floppy. Oh, I right away see an issue. Okay, here's the hard drive cable, which we can pull off. Pull the floppy drive cable off. Pull the power connector off. Oh, I see some bad stuff on this board. So first of all, I gotta say this Mac Classic 2 motherboard is very cute. Has two SIM slots on here. I think this is a RAM expansion. It says ROM slash FPU expansion slot. It has a Motorola 68030 16 megahertz right here. It looks like this machine has onboard memory. It looks like perhaps this is two megabytes here and an additional two megabytes, but that's pretty crappy from an expansion standpoint. You could probably put eight megabyte SIMs in here. So maybe 16, 18 megabytes of RAM total. The SE30 on the other hand, it has a lot of RAM slots. Eight of them I think can go to 64 megabytes of RAM with the proper ROM upgrade. Anyhow, just as I thought, there's a mess going on around these capacitors here. These have definitely leaked, caused havoc all over the place. Not to say this board is toast because of these leaky caps. It might be fine if I just remove these and put some new parts on. But what's also happened is this lithium battery has leaked and that has potential for total destruction of this motherboard. There's definitely a lot of evidence of corrosion around here. So it could be from this capacitor and these capacitors here that have leaked, but there's a big mess all over this IC all around the processor here. So I have a feeling with the way this looks here, there's no way this machine is even running any code right now. This machine may be toast, but the fact that this leaked, it's all rusty in there. If this actually escaped here and leaked down onto the motherboard, I'd say this thing is completely toast. Let's get this off. Let's get this battery holder off. Ooh. It's like the metal contact literally came off with it. And here's the battery right there. And we may be lucky that it's possible that it didn't leak down onto the motherboard. Although I'm not, I'm not holding out hope. There are two screw holes on this battery holder and it probably leaked through that one up at the top where my finger is. So I'm gonna end up with a bunch of batteries I need to take to e-waste. So I'm gonna use this cardboard box here to throw this stuff into, keep those until I can get them to e-waste. Well, at this point with all these motherboards, there's nothing more to do, but throw them in soapy water. Just gonna let them soak, hopefully clean off some of the gunk, some of that capacitor juice. And uh, yeah, I'll come back and do some actual scrubbing. But for now, I'm, I'm actually just gonna let that soak in there. Yeah, looking back at the rest of the classic here, I don't see anything totally egregious. It's definitely dirty in there, but on this analog board, all the caps, they look okay. Now, I'm not really familiar with what the common issues are on this particular analog board. There are probably particular things that fail a lot, and I'm not quite sure what those are on this, but but hopefully between all these machines, we can kind of assemble some that do work. Also, what's nice is these nine inch CRTs are relatively interchangeable between the different machines as well. Next up, we have machine number five. This is a Mac Classic. As you see, it has the hard drive in here, but things are looking really bad for this machine. I'd say there's gonna be no hope that this thing will ever work, and here's why. Well, I'm sorry, I gotta end this video here. Sorry to leave you on a cliffhanger, but the video is getting rather long and don't worry, there'll be tons more repair videos on these classic Macs. So if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, but if you didn't, you know what to do, you can hit that thumbs down button, put your comments and your suggestions in the comment section below, subscribe for more videos and to support the channel and stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.